genetics a lot of people like this topic more than any other in the year and it's actually one of my favorites and we're going to be talking about a lot of things under the, under the umbrella of genetics we're going to start by t discussing the discovery of the genes in the in the in the sense of of the inheritable thing that gets passed on from generation to generation and then we're going to go from there and we're going to talk about um how, about chromosomes and how human traits and how human traits are passed on from generation to generation and then we're going to do some advanced genetics and so and then we're going to do uh, protein synthesis, uh, DNA structure, we're going to be doing uh, biotechnology, uh, gene, gene co control and expression, uh, central dogma, a lot of things under the umbrella of genetics. And it's definitely one of the most exciting uh, parts of biology and currently it's where most of the biology research is focusing in because um, so much has been discovered in the, in the, in the field of zoology, of, of um, botany, and other fields already, that genetics is perhaps the, at the front end of, of biological research. And it's definitely um, involved in most aspects of current biological research. And so it's a very, very important topic. And so let's talk about that. Uh, what makes you who you are? Uh, what makes you different from other animals and other species? What makes you, in some ways, the same as them? Um, there's a lot. For, in which we are the same as bacteria or a frog. What makes you, um, um, what is this thing called chromosome and this, and this thing called genes? How can that become who you are and what you see and how, what process actually makes all of this possible? And how, how can this be tra traveling from generation to generation and evolving over time? All of these things are the topics that we talk about under the umbrella of genetics. And so let's start by talking about traits and what those things are. So when you think about traits, um, you think about in, in characters, you think about things that make you who you are. And let's talk about some genetic, cool genetic traits. We're going to do actually do an activity about this in class, but let's see some of them. So there are 46 chromosomes in a human, and this is why you see here in the top left is a pedigree that shows how a certain trait is passed on from one generation to the next. Eventually we'll talk about that. And let's see some of the traits which are easy to track across generations for humans and it's basically right, made based on, on just a few genes. Now, the eyes are definitely not one of those, but you see here in the top right an example of a trait that is not an easy trait to track, such as the eye color. Because eye color has lots and lots of genes involved in making your actual eye color. Definitely more than six genes. And so you see that there are eye color varies all the way from a grayish to a dark brown and so and some people even look like they have black eyes and so you see that this this uh, is a very great diversity or a very great uh, more polymorphism of, of eye color in life and so genetics is both what causes this diversity and what causes all to be the same we all do have eyes you know, if we don't, it's considered a big anomaly that causes problems for us. And so it's, it's what causes both things, all right? Now, what about these other traits? Having dimples versus not having dimples versus having just one, like me. I only have one dimple right there, you know? Um, and, which is basically an area where the cells are not elastic enough. They're not growing or they're not have the uh, f feature of growing enough. So it's basically a birthmark you, you, you're born with. Whether it's a face, face temple or a back temple or anything else in your body, it's a, consider a mark that you're born with. And, and you believe some, some, people, some people even get, get surgery to get them because they think it's uh, interesting. Uh, forget it. You know, it's crazy. Being right-handed versus being left-handed, which one are you? Or are you ambidextrous? Can you do it both ways? It doesn't write with both your hands. Um, when you stand your thumb up, does it face backwards like mine does, or does it face up? Do you have the hitchhiker's thumb? Yes or not? Uh, your earlobes, check it out. Are they attached to your uh, face, or are they, are they hanging from your face? You can see the difference in the picture there. Do you have a hairline that is straight or do you have window speak which is like a V little indentation right in front of your forehead like Keanu Reeves has there see um, 
Are you a male or a female? That is a very, very discreet feature. You know, are you either one or the other? Now, remember, the majority of human features are more like eye color. You know, there's several options, but some of them are discreet, like we're just one or the other. Now, here's some one that is a little bit in between. Are you capable of rolling your tongue in these ways? Can you do that? That's the only one I can do. I can't even do any of the other ones. But all of these things are genetic. It's a uh, uh, you're born with the capacity to do that. It's not something you can learn to do, you know? And so, all right. Now, what about skin color or hair color or eye color? We talked about those. Those are all discrete traits, and there's a lot of variation all the way from dark black to, to, to really white skin, all the way from really black hair to really uh, whitish hair to even red hair. And so there's a lot of different types of human hair, human eye color, and so forth. These are called polymorphic traits or traits which are determined by many, many genes. All right? Not like the traits we saw in the previous one. Let's see some, some more. Again, you see here the dimples that we talked about before. And you see several famous actors that have dimples. And a lot of people think dimples are charming. I happen to have one, so I'm biased. Um, you see the earlobe and the tongue rolling that we talked about. All right? Now, here's some, some other one, cool ones. I bet you didn't realize about this. Can you uh, fold your arms like this? All right? All right. Now, do you, have, do you have your right arm in front of your left arm, or do you have it the other way around? Well, most people put their right arm over their left arm. If, you do, if you're opposite... It's, you're, you're, you're probably recessive. It's, uh, it's, not the, it's not what most people are like. It doesn't mean anything, but check it out. Try to invert and force your arms the other way. Doesn't it feel odd? Like, I, don't, I don't even know how to. It's because my entire life I folded the arms one way, and that is genetic. Do the same thing with your thumbs. Get both your hands, cross your fingers like this, and then put, put your thumb like that over the top. Did you put the right thumb on top of the left thumb or the left thumb on top of the right thumb? Switch them around. Feel the difference. You probably never realized, but your entire life, you do it one way. And that's because we having the capacity to, to actually do this is a genetic trait. Uh, we talked about the hitchhiker's stump already. Do you have hair or not on your middle finger? Look at your middle finger right in the middle of your hand and see if you have hair there. If you don't have hair there, it's a recessive trait. Most people do have hair there. Is your toe longer, your second toe longer than your, than your first toe or the other way around? That is also a genetic trait. Are you left-handed or are you right-handed? Can you do this? You know, the Vulcan V with your hands. Notice that I have a little bit of trouble doing it, but I can't. But on my other hand, forget it. I can't do it at all. The way that Tanya Spock is doing there on the bottom. Can you, it looks, bet your, your pinky finger, look at my pinky finger. You see how it's straight when I put it up? But some people actually have a little curve on their pinky finger. You know, they're like crooked. Uh, some people have the capacity of bending their fingers forward. Just the tip of the finger, they can do this. I can't do it. All of that is a genetic trait. Um, so, let's... What about things like human behavior? Are those things genetic? Uh, is, uh, is who you are genetic? Well, there's a lot of conflict about that, but if you think about it, several fields of science have tried to answer that question, from game theory to psychology to sociology to anthropology and so forth. A lot of people have tried to study over the time whether or not um, behavior is genetic. And as we try to understand the key to the mind, we are learning that although a lot of our behavior is learned, a lot of it is also genetic. For example, we all, we all recognize these features as joy or bliss, as sorrow on her eyes that she's crying. Over here we have anger or frustration. And then we have an, an expression of affection or love or care. We have an expression of indignation or anger on the top left with a girl and a kid. And we can all understand the basic features of the way the eyes and mouth move, and this is pretty much universal. And we can understand these basic emotions of fury, anger, sorrow, disgust, horror, surprise, and so forth. And for all of humanity, it's pretty much the same. And as you can see, 
even as babies if you frown for into a for baby you eventually might cry because we understand we have this basic understanding of of uh, of uh, of these facial features and so genetics is definitely important even when it comes down to human behavior and that's just an example of simple emotions but even more complex emotions could be theoretically considered genetics and perhaps even the way we think is sometimes genetic uh, there's studies that indicate that I uh, think there are some traits which some thought patterns which seem to be genetic because a lot of us share common thoughts or share common expressions or some, something like that that is not necessarily learned because it's the same across many generations and cultures and so forth and so psychology is also trying to understand that um, you see here uh, another kind another kind of trait um, flower color or traits that make cats different and you see all the different variations of that. This is, again, another example of what they call a polymorphic trait, or a trait that has many different versions, instead of the traits, discrete traits that we were talking about before. Now that we've talked about some of these traits and characters, uh, let's clarify what this whole thing means. So, heredity, which is the first thing we're going to do when we talk about genetics, is the study of how these characters or traits that we just mentioned are passed on from generation to generation to generation. And why do you have it and someone else does, doesn't? Basically, that's what heredity is trying to answer. And the first person to really try to answer that was Greg Mendel. And basically, what he focused on is studying the, how, again, how traits are passed on from generation to generation. And we also, he also talked about things like character versus trait. Now, I want to make this clear. What is a character? A character is a specific feature of your body. So, for example, the things we talked about, uh, having hitchhiker's thumb versus not, that's a character. Or being able or not able to roll your thumb, that's a character. Uh, the, the way the cat looks, the color pattern of the cat, that's a, that's a character. Uh, the color of a flower, that's a character. The shape of a flower can also be a character. You know? Uh, and so... What's a trait? A trait is a specific example or type of character. So, for example, cat A has a coloration. Cat B is a more tiger-like coloration. D, sorry, has a tiger-like coloration. Uh, and you see the trait here it will be the different co actual the actual color of the different colors of plant. And so the character is what you're looking at or what you're studying. And a trait is a specific example of that. And so uh, my hair is a character. The, ha having having hair versus not having hair is a specific type of that character all right so um, eye color is the character brown eye color is the trait you understand so you should practice that and see if you understand the difference between the character and the trait all right and we'll we'll take it from here in the next video where we're actually going to talk about Mandel and everything that he brought to us